Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Today we look at surface area and volume scale factors. So we've heard about scale factors to death. So we know, of course, a scale factor is basically what you multiply by the lengths of the sides in one shape to get the lengths of the sides in another shape. So if the linear scale factor, so linear being how much we multiply the length of a line by. If that is k, we already know from a previous lesson that the area scale factor is k squared. So remember, if I multiply the lengths of, say, a rectangle by 2, then the area will be multiplied by 2 squared, which is 4. If I multiply the lengths of the side of, say, a triangle by a half, the area will be multiplied by a half squared, which is a quarter. So we know that already. Now it turns out that the scale factor for area is the same as for surface area. So the surface area scale factor is also k squared. Of course, now we're looking at 3D shapes. So 2D shapes have area and 3D shapes have surface area. So what this means is if I multiply say the lengths of each side of a rectangular prism by 2, the surface area will be multiplied by 2 squared, which is 4. If I multiply the lengths, the dimensions of, say, a cone by 3, then its surface area will be multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9. So this works for any 3D shape any 3D shape you can think of, no matter how obscure, even if it's not one of the 3D shapes that we've talked about, if it's not a prism or a pyramid or a sphere or anything like that. So remember the reason for this is when you're finding area or surface area, you're multiplying the two dimensions together. So you're multiplying by the linear scale factor k twice. Now the volume scale factor when you're finding volume, you're multiplying three dimensions together. So you're multiplying by this linear scale factor three times. So the linear scale factor is k cubed. So remember, if you wanted to find the volume of, say, a rectangular prism, it's length times width times height. If I multiply, say, each of these sides by 2, then the length becomes 2. 2L, the width becomes 2W, and the height becomes 2H. So I'm multiplying by this linear scale factor three times, and that's just the same as length times width times height times 2 cubed, or 8. So that's why the volume scale factor is k cubed. And again, this works for any 3D shape, no matter how obscure the shape is. So we're just going to be solving problems using this. So please pause and copy this down if you need it. I'm about to do a few examples. So these are the kinds of problems that we can solve. Now I've chosen two shapes where we could find out the volume of the unknown shape a different way. So let's look at the soccer balls first. So the diameter of the first soccer ball is 10 and the diameter of the second soccer ball is 30 centimeters. So the volume of the first one, I've rounded it up, is 524. So we can figure out what the volume of the second shape could be. Now another way we could find this volume is we could solve and find the radius and then use the formula. But I want to show you that this way will be much quicker. So the scale factor here is clearly 30 divided by 10, which is 3. So the volume here will be 524 multiplied by 3 cubed. That's all you have to put in your calculator. And so the total volume will just be about 524 times 3 cubed, which is around about 14,148, in this case centimetres cubed. Okay? So, easy as that. Let's look at the second example. So this time we know the volume of the bigger shape. So the scale factor from the larger one to the smaller one, this time is 2 over 3. Of course, it should be less than 1 because the first one is smaller. So if I want to find the volume of the smaller shape, I take the volume of the larger one, which is 27, and I multiply by the scale factor cubed, and I end up with 8. 
okay? Now this volume, I could have figured it out very easy anyway. It's a cube, it's just two times two times two. But same in the trouble, I've just done it a different way. All right, let's look at some more complicated questions now. So let's go ahead and look at this question here. So a cone's enlarged with its volume's been increased by a factor of a thousand. That means its volume has been multiplied by a thousand. And I want to find out how many times larger the surface area will be. Now I don't need to do any drawings or anything like that. I know that if the area scale factor is k, then the volume scale factor is going to be k cubed. Now I'm told in this that k cubed, the volume scale factor, is a thousand. So to find k, I just take the cubed root of a thousand, you can put it on your calculator if you need, is just 10. So k is 10. Now I want to find the area scale factor or the surface area scale factor. So that will just be k squared. In this case, it's 10 squared, which is 100. So that means if the cone's enlarged so that its volume's been multiplied by a thousand, its surface area will be a hundred times that of the original cone. Okay, let's look at this question here now. So we're talking about ice cream. A company sells ice cream cones and they've reduced the dimensions, the height and radius of a cone each by 20%. And we want to know what the ratio of the new volume of ice cream will be to the old volume. Okay, so first, of course, we have to find the scale factor. So we've reduced the volume, oh, sorry, the dimensions by 20%. So what we're effectively doing, and we've learned this way back at the start of the semester, when we reduce something by 20%, we're timesing it by 0 0.8, which is also 4 over 5. You're finding or keeping, if you like, 80% of the dimension. We're multiplying each by 0.8. So the volume, so the volume scale factor is going to be 4 over 5 cubed. So that equals 64 over 125. Just put that in your calculator. So the ratio of the new volume to the old volume is 64 to 125. So it is so the new volume of ice cream after they reduce the dimensions of the cone by 20% will be just over half of what the original volume was. 64 to 128 would be exactly a half. And that's how you do questions like that. All right, hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.